On the panel today, we've got Scott McElroy from Hocking Stewart, Robert LaRocca from the REIV, and Greville Pabs from WBP Property. Hi, Karina. Today, we're talking about apartments. Scott, what makes a good apartment? I think a great apartment, Karina, is um, one that's well located, first of all, local amenities, and uh, we're particularly, obviously, in the city apartments, is the area that have got great investment returns and, and great lifestyle benefits. So I think that a great apartment is something that offers you the accommodation that you're probably seeking, but obviously close to everything you could possibly enjoy about an inner city lifestyle. Yep. And Greville? Yeah, look, I agree with Scott, but I think one of the most important things that we look at is, is scarcity and you know, not having too many apartments in, in, in a block. I, I went to a couple of auctions on the weekend and there was you know, really competitive bidding despite the market being you know, quite weak at the moment, a bit uncertain, but those two apartments uh, just went off really strong. So good results, uh, you know, uh, you're getting good results for good properties and good, and good apartments, but it comes back to that scarcity factor and, and location as Scott So said. they would have been in small um, boutique Development. Yeah, exactly. You know, generally blocks of less than 20 and, um, you know, and they, they go pretty, pretty well. Yeah. And also within the building, um, you need to choose the apartment too, don't you? Exactly right. I mean, you could get more demand, for, for example, say in a, in, a, in, a, in a first floor front than what you do at a, an apartment on the ground floor at the back. And, and essentially that might be because of, you know, security concerns, particularly in the inner city, or, you know, you don't have people walking past your, your flat or cars driving past or having all the garbage carousels are right outside your flat. So um, the position in the block is, um, is very important uh, and we certainly will look for like a northerly aspect of living room, you know, a balcony facing north. Um, those sort of aspects where you can get lots of light into your apartment. So it's about that and it's about the layout of your flat as well, which um, really does underpin value. It's a new factor in the whole location question really, isn't it? I mean, buyers have to learn the lingo of a, you know, a suburb filled with units and apartments in the same way they might have looked, um, you know, all the houses in, or there's some good houses and bad houses in a suburb and a good location in a certain suburb and a less good location. Each apartment tower in some respects is its own suburb and has to be separated from those that are around it. They're not, you know, all the apartments in South Bank are not the same. Yeah, Scott, what about views and, and balconies and things like that? Well, ter there's no, well, Greville made the point before about security factors with ground floor apartments, but courtyards certainly do make a big difference when you are selling the apartments and the extra extension of a living area to an outdoor area can certainly add value yep. um, and good sized terraces, etc. Um, the other combination of, a, of number of bedrooms, typically we're seeing one bedroom apartments becoming a little bit smaller in a lot of the inner bigger developments, catering for predominantly the investment market. But if you can get the one bedroom apartment that's maybe between 50 and 60 square metres or you know, six squares in the old, um, and then a two better that's probably in excess of 80 square metres to probably even 90 square metres, you're fine that you're getting the same sort of size very often that you're getting in most single fronted terraces, but you're in an apartment. Then if you can get a two bedroom with two bathrooms, you get the benefit of, if you're looking to lease the property, we've got two separate tenants that can both have their own bathroom, which again adds to the, the rental demand for the property. So. Certainly views make a big difference. They tend to make a big difference in Melbourne more when you're near the bay than they do in the inner city areas because yep. sea lights, whilst it's great to be there, I think it's more about proximity and, and amenity on your doorstep is more the demand. But courtyards and the size of the apartment, I think, makes a big difference. And aspect, northerly, as, northerly aspects do add significantly to the... So, size is a, a real a big factor. Particularly a lot of banks won't lend on apartments if they're less than 40 square metres, for example. So mm -hmm. um, that's a real... Um, and, that, and that used to be yeah. 50 square metres. Yeah. Now the banks have come down to 40. So, um, you know, a lot of the student accommodation and service departments, so the market has become smaller and it certainly fits a marketplace, but then the owner-occupiers tend to be looking for the larger the larger apartments. Well, it's good that the banks have done that, of course, because the only way that we're going to satisfy this city's housing needs in the next 20, 30 years is by increased high and medium density My development word. in My and word. around the city. Because um, the fact, the problem we face at the moment, of course, is that the general public are not enamoured with you know the stock, um, and yet we don't have the land to keep going out. Um, it's also and, more and expensive we, yeah. to develop too, so yeah. it's a big of an issue. Greville, what about buying off the plan? Yeah, there's certainly some significant risks in, in buying off the plan, and I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, essentially, when you buy off the plan, what you're doing is you're, you're buying a, a, a portion of the land, 
Okay, so if, if, if you've got an apartment complex of 200 apartments, you're buying one 200. So you, you, you're buying a, a portion of the land and then, then you're buying a building contract. Okay, so there's a cost to build. Now, invariably, the land plus the building contract doesn't always equal market value. And, and that's probably one of the mistakes a lot of people make is that land plus um, building cost doesn't, doesn't equal market value. Many people think it does. Mm -hmm. uh, now, people are attracted to buying off the plan um, because of the stamp duty savings. Um, and sometimes we see um, in our office, you know, contracts that are manipulated for that fact in terms of land values are, um, uh, are lower in, in order to reduce the, the stamp duty that people pay and building costs um, are given a, more of a premium in the contract so that they can, uh, investors can get depreciation allowances. Now, I suppose when you're buying off the plan, um, one thing you've got to remember is that um, financial incentives, um, stamp duty savings and all of those things are really not the reasons to buy property. If, if, you, if you buy off the plan, you to ensure that, um, that it stands alone, that the value will be maintained at, at the end when, you, uh, when, it, when it's completed uh, without the need for financial incentives. If I was pricing a new development off the plan, I priced it at today's values and what I can know that's going to be worth at the end and advise the marketplace. So I'm not going to say something's worth 600 now and it's only worth 400 in two years' time when it might be completed. I think there's, I hear, yeah, there's certainly risk involved in buying off the plan, but at the same time, if we didn't have sales off the plan, nothing would get built. Okay, because the bank's not going to lend money to developers to actually build new developments and create accommodation unless a certain percentage of a development is actually sold off the plan to get it off the ground. Yeah. So there has to, and that's why there is incentives there for stamp duty savings to encourage people to actually commit and sign up and be on a, go on a journey to actually have something ready for themselves in 18 months from now. What I like to say is that you, you should never speculate. And when you're buying off the plan, you're speculating because you, you're speculating into a market in two years' time. Now, what's that market going to look like in two years' time? Is it going to be oversupplied? Are the, what's the bank's policies in two years' time? They might say, well, okay, we're not going to lend uh, 70 or 80 per cent off the plan because they've got too much exposure to apartment, the apartment market in Melbourne. And they might say, well, okay, I'm only going, we're only going to lend 50%. And so some banks might even pull out altogether of lending to that sector. So you really are speculating um, in some cases. I would recommend that if you're buying off the plan, that you buy in, like Scott said before, the boutique um, blocks of you know, less, than, less than 20. Mm -hmm. And they're certainly a much safer bet. If we don't have a growth in units and apartments in the city, we're not going to meet our population's housing needs, and that will provide you know, ongoing demand for that sort of property into the future because we're not going to meet all of our housing needs by expanding outwards. That's all we've got time for this week.